I begin with the greetings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his previous brothers in Al-Islam from the beginning of humanity Adam onwards to the cumulation of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim wa ba'd We always begin by praising Allah, by thanking Him we testify and we state with firmness that none is worthy of worship but Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his worshiping slave and final messenger. My dear brothers and sisters in Al-Islam, I wish to first begin by congratulating the team that has come together, brothers and sisters, to bring to us once again another journey, another rihla, journey of faith, journey of iman. We spoke last year about our love and our care for the image and the life and the tradition and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this year we gather together to remind ourselves of our duties to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and to make a spiritual attempt of joining ourselves to the historical figures that led us to this point of Islam. I want you first to acknowledge the great diversity that makes up this Muslim community. The brother introduces me by saying he's come to us from Australia, literally the opposite end of the world in Perth, WA. I wish to first say to you that the Muslims in Australia, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah have the strength and the dedication to Allah and Islam in the same capacity and in the same way that you have here in Toronto, in the same capacity and in the same way that those of the Gaza Palestinians possess it. In the same way and in the same capacity of those who live in the north, western, eastern parts of China. In the same capacity of the millions of Muslims in Russia. In the same capacity of the largest Islamic country in the world, Indonesia. Where more Muslims live in that one non-Arabic Asian country than all of the Muslims in the Arab world combined. Allahu Akbar. We are on a journey of faith to remind ourselves anew of our duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of our need of Him. Are we friends with Allah? Are we close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There's this image within certain sections of Islamic society that a person to become wali, or a friend or a close individual to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that that's a miraculous spiritual awakening event that is unattainable except by the highest extremes. I come to tell you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us in the Quran that the awliya of Allah and the word wali, it means one who loves Allah, one who is protected by Allah, one who is sanctioned by Allah, one who has drawn near to Allah, so Allah has drawn near to him, whose opposite is the adu of Allah. The opposite of the wali is the one who is in enmity and in hatred and in animosity with the creator of the heavens of the earth. Allah says to you, inna awliya Allah. The awliya, those who are near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. They will never have any suffering, never fear. They receive bushra from Allah, glad tidings. What are the things that made them close to Allah? Alladheena amanu. Wa kanu yattaqoon. They are those who were true in faith. And those who had piety, sincere concern, sincere taqwa with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is narrated by Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim. He quotes to us the words of Allah, which are not from the Quran, but are an oral tradition, hadith Qudsi, a sacred text from the words of Allah, where Allah promises and says, مَنْ عَادَ لِي وَلِيًّا فَقَدْ آذَنْتُهُ بِالْحَرْبِ The one who is in opposition to one of my friends, to one who I've shown protection, shown love for, I shall wage a war against him. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as is quoted to us by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa never does a person 
you and I humble created beings. You and I who are full of sins. You and I who live a life of ups and downs. You and I who draw close to Allah one day and step back two or three steps for every one that we draw near Allah. He says, the one who fulfills the obligations, he comes close to me until I love him or her. And then they perform an nafl and nawafil, voluntary acts of worship. And that causes me to draw closer to him or her to the point that when they see, they see with what I wish for them to see. When they hear, they hear with what I want them to hear. When they step, they step with firmness in the way that I want them to step. And therefore your existence changes and you become a dedicated individual in your day-to-day -day existence to pleasing your Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be under no illusions, my dear brothers, my dear sisters in Islam. Being a friend and protected and loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not something beneath you. It's not something unattainable. It's not too high. It's not too lofty a name. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spread his protection and mercy to things that are compelled in their worship and subjugation to Him. Animals, plants, trees, all that we observe in the heavens and the earth are bound to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you have been given the amana to carry on your shoulders. Allah has placed that covenant upon you, has given you the right and the freedom to choose. Imma shakiran wa imma kafura. You have been given an opportunity to choose to be thankful and grateful and believing or to be ungrateful, unwilling to accept, unwilling to obey the laws and the dictates and the spiritual nearness that is drawn to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I wish to begin by emphasizing for myself in particular the importance of self-development. The Prophet would teach us وسلم, in subtle, simple ways that there is always a progressive need to move from one stage to the next. You conclude your salah, your prayers by saying assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace to those praying with you and those of the unseen. And then you say, using the prayers of the Prophet وسلم, Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Oh Allah, strengthen me in my next prayers to be ever remembering of you and greater in thanks of you and to make my ibadah ahsan, better than what I have just performed. So you want your fajr to be better than the previous isha the night before. You want your Sundays to be better than your Saturdays. You want your week today to be better than what it was before, and your aim is to improve in the coming weeks. There is this importance of self-development, always asking Allah to perfect your character, your conduct, to make you better than what you are, and to make others perceive you as better and to set you as an example for others to follow. One of the greatest prayers that we find in the Quran that begins with Rabbana, our Lord, we ask you, make from our families and our offspring, our children, qurrata a'yun, something that is pleasing to the sight, pleasing to ourselves. Waj'alna lil muttaqina imama. Our Lord, we ask you to allow everyone to see our righteous conduct and to seek to emulate us and follow us. And that is not a sense of arrogance or a sense of pride, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. You wish to be the best examples for society. I never try to speak in simple terms of Muslim and non-Muslim. We are human beings who have been put on this earth and have been delegated tasks. We have been given the path of righteousness to follow. 
We are asked to follow the tradition of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For those of us who know about it, for those of us who are Muslim, we are acquainted from it and there is a level of priority that it is set for us in our life. And our conduct with those who are not of the Islamic faith does not diminish, does not alter in comparison to our conduct with Muslims. As a Muslim, my conduct with my fellow human being does not shift. And the Prophet ﷺ makes that clear in numerous examples in his life. He would say to us things like, Man ghasha falaysa minna. The one who cheats, not just cheats Muslims, cheats anyone. He's not a part of our community. The Prophet would speak in broad terms about honesty, truthfulness, trust, fulfilling obligations, financial transactions, legitimate behavior, acceptance of moral codes and conduct. The laws of Islam have the laws of al-urf, the customary law, common laws that are associated that do not contradict or seek to ex extinguish laws that are set from al-Islam. All of that is part of our tradition as Muslims that draws us near to that ultimate aim of obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you as a Muslim traveling home today, you stop at that red light having faith in Allah and you say to yourself even though it's 2 a.m. and none can see me that I stop because it is a common law amongst us of mutual accord and respect and you expect a reward from your creator spiritual reward for that action of common day-to-day -day life so you draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how do we come to Allah how do you become a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how do you become a person who what you see and what you hear and what you envision leads you closer and closer to the ideals of a true human existence? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam answers that question. I wish to fire off a few statements from the Prophet because it's important for us as Muslims to always think of what the Prophet said, what the Prophet did, how he modeled our life, how he sought for us to exist. The Prophet ﷺ would say, Ayatul Munafiqi Thalath. A sign of a hypocrite is one of the three, or together combined. Ida Haddatha Kadab. If they speak, they lie. Ida Tumina Khan. If they're given a trust, they betray it. Ida Ahada Akhlaf. If they're in promised to keep, if they if make a promise, they do not fulfill it. Character and conduct. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, taught us that our tawheed, our relationship with Allah, la ilaha illallah, has that condition. The people who rejected the Prophet وسلم's words of la ilaha illallah, they didn't just reject it because they hated him or they had an animosity to a political motive. It wasn't simply because they hated the man Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's because they knew by saying that simple sentence, La ilaha illallah, that it was to change the character of their life. That the words they spoke, they were held accountable for. That the strike of their hand, they would be held accountable for. That the look of their eyes, the listen of their ears, the movement of their tongues and its words, they would be held accountable for. And you find on the opposite extreme, Bilal, that great Ethiopian muaddin of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the call, the caller of prayer. He knew nothing of Islam. Very early days of Islam, just a few weeks into the message of the Prophet, all he knew about faith is Ahadun Ahad. There's just one Lord to be worshipped, just one. That's all he knew. He didn't have a social conduct of Islam. He didn't learn fiqh. He didn't follow a madhab. He doesn't learn or know verses from the Quran. He knew one God and it changed his life to the point that he was willing to be roasted on the sands of Arabia to uphold that belief of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. 
So you draw close to Allah, you model yourself, you listen to those words of caution about your character and your conduct. You hear the words of the Prophet where he says to you, Khayrukum, the best of my men, the best of the men in this ummah, Khayrukum li ahli, is the one who is best in his conduct with his wife. You hear the words of the Prophet وسلم, where he would say in his final sermon, moments and days before his death, he sat on his mimbar and he tells the people sitting assembled in front of him, worrying what is this final legacy of the Prophet وسلم, and he repeats what he had told them in his final hajj. He says, لا تضرب الوجه. Never strike your wife on her face. Now you will say to yourself, Brother Yahya is saying the Prophet said, don't hit your wife on your face. Does that mean anywhere else? And this is what usually is implied in, un in uncorrect and incorrect translations. The Prophet says, never strike your wife on her face. And don't even be vulgar in words, meaning from one extreme to the other. There is never a permission in the striking from the Sunnah and the tradition of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Never strike her from one extreme. Don't even be vulgar in your words to her. How far have we come from that ideal example of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we seek nearness to Allah. The Prophet says to us, is narrated in Sahih Muslim, a man who is lost in the desert, his camel that carries his water and all of his provisions has left him while he slept at night. So he wakes up and all he has left is to turn to his maker. And he says, Ya Rabb, my Lord, my Lord, save me. And then the Prophet, as if mocking that individual, says, Ma'kalahu min haram. What he consumes is haram. Mashrabuhu min haram. His drink is from haram. Ghuzziya bil haram. His whole nourishment, his existence is based on illicit, un Islamic practice. Malbasahu min haram. Even his attire is bought and shared and adorned in haram. Anna yustajabla. How can he perceive that Allah will answer him? We have to look within our homes, within our families, within our children. We have to analyze ourselves. How can we draw close to Allah? And what are the things the Prophet calls us to be distant from? The Prophet ﷺ was an ideal example. And he calls us to al wusta this middle path. It's a path where there's no extremes of overdoing something or underdoing something. And one of the greatest struggles we have within Islam today, the faith of Allah, Islam as it was with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is complete. And it is perfected and it is protected by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But individuals who practice it lead others away from the true way of Allah. And you find that great hadith of Hudayfa, which is narrated by Imam al-Bukhari, where the Prophet envisions and makes pr a prophecy of the future to come, where he says there will come a time fihi dakhan, where the world is confused and it's cloudy and murky. And Hudayfa, one of his companions, asked him, Ya Rasulullah, where do I go? Who do I follow? And the Prophet says to him, follow the leadership of the believers. Go to the largest in numbers and the best in practice. Go to those who lead you to my words and to the tradition of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Huzaifa says, what if nothing is really apparent? I don't know who to follow. The Prophet says to him, bite onto a tree and just be on your own. Just practice, just be faithful on your own. What was that danger the Prophet warned him about? He says that there will be nas min jildatikum. People who come from your own skins, from your own people. Yatakallamuna bi alsinatikum. They speak in your words and are from your communities. Wahum du'atun ala abwabin nar. But they will call people to put them through into the gates of fire. 
How many words from the Quran, how many traditions from the Prophet have been twisted and turned to claim murder and to claim atrocities? Is that from the tradition of the Prophet ﷺ? Is that from his example? Is that the conduct of the one who is close to Allah and is protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In fact, that is in opposition. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is majestic in his mercy to us. I want to leave you with these words of the Prophet wasallam, where he speaks about the mercy that Allah has brought down on this earth. And it's important for you to know nothing brought from the Prophet wasallam in the form of Islam is calling to, ev to anything other than mercy. Because his mission is defined by Allah, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have sent you, O Muhammad, as a bearer of mercy unto mankind. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So even if in, in his strenuous words, in his harsh words, in the difficult commands, in the waking up before the sun rises and, and fulfilling your prayers, in the struggle of bearing the the hijab and donning it when people don't understand. In the face of racial hostility, animosity, difficulty, you are dignified in al Islam. The true worshipping slaves of Allah are those who walk upon this earth in humility and in peaceful manner. They are those who when they are approached by those of ignorance, who are unknowing of what they are upon, they simply say to them, Salama, we want nothing more than peace with you. That is the description of those who are true worshippers of Allah, those who have drawn near Him. Fulfill your obligations. We sit in the thousands here today, and it saddens the heart to know that amongst us there is this collective knowledge of Islam of things that are deemed ilmun bid darura, things you know about Islam just because you're Muslim. You know how to pray, when to pray, what, what to pray, at what time, what to say in your prayers. You know everything that is about salah and you find that difficult struggle to perform. And it's something I go through and it's something you go through. And it's difficult except for those who have true humility and humbleness before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fulfill the fara'id, fulfill those obligations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He will draw near to you. Do you know that Allah knows where you are now? See, we don't think of Allah as being our personal Creator, our personal Lord, the one who is looking at us now, who hears us now, who sees us now, who knows what's in our heart now. And Allah says to you, Wama min waraka. There isn't a leaf that falls off the limb of a tree, illa illa ya'lamuha, except he has knowledge of it falling. Allahu Akbar. وَمَا مِنْ حَبَّةٍ And not a seed that is in the darkness of the soils of the earth except he knows its place. And you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you haven't sought to be near Him. You haven't wanted and desired to befriend Him. You seek Him in adversity. You are like those on the ship as described in the Qur'an the waves begin to play with them. Da'awullah, save us our Lord. But when they reach land, they forget. How soon our hearts change. Fulfill those obligations, your salah, your siyam, your zakah, your hajj. Hajj is around the corner after the month of Ramadan. Already people are advertising, and I speak about Hajj purposefully, because it is a journey of faith. It leads you to Allah, and there are a majority of Muslims who are capable financially, economically, in their time, that can fulfill that obligation and they have this desire to go, but something holds them back that, inshallah, I have to wait, maybe when I'm a little older, 
maybe it's, you know, I, I, need, I need a little bit more spiritual development before I go on this journey. Come to Allah. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu stajeebu lillahi wa lirrasooli idha da'akum. O you who believe, answer and respond to the call of Allah when they invite you to that which gives you life. To be alive. You can be sitting, living, breathing, eating, drinking, and you are dead. Your heart is dead. لَهُمْ أَعْيُنْ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا Your eyes, you see, but you don't perceive. You hear, but you do not listen. Your heart feels, but does not comprehend. أُولَٰئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَامِ Such is the state of cattle, of animals, of livestock. بَلْ هُمْ Humans who have this condition, who do not know of Allah, who do not perceive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are in that condition and they are distant from Allah. So come to Allah, respond to Allah, respond to His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hear their invitation, hear the call. Come and join in that path of righteousness. Come into the journey of faith. Come to Allah, respond to Allah, change from your life. Cry out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my Lord, I'm in debt. My Lord, I don't pray. Ya Rabb, help me. You ask for other things from other people at other times. But you crumble when it's time to come to Allah to ask Him for things that are of life and death importance. Renew your relationship with the Qur'an. Find good friends, people who will bring you strength of faith, don't look to those above you, but look to those beneath you and see what you have been blessed with. Take nothing you have for granted. Know that your life and your health and your family and your job and your income and this great country that you live in, which as a Canadian I miss, even though Australia is great, if there's any Australians in the audience. My wife is Australian, I had to say it. Look what you have, look where we are, look what you do. Look at the provisions and the rizq that Allah has given you. Be proud of where you are, where you live. Give to the community more than you have taken. We take, we take many things. Some social services, some liberties with credit, some free education, free health care, give back. Give back from your time to your community, to other communities. Share with the burden of others. Draw close to Allah. The Prophet ﷺ, and I conclude with this hadith. As is narrated by Imam al-Bukhari, he says, A wealthy individual, Rajulun Ghani, exited his home and he was from the Jewish tribes before Islam's advent came. A rich Jewish man left his home in the darkness of the night and he said within himself, I'm going to give this small purse, this small sack of gold to the first person I bump into and don't let them recognize me and I don't want to recognize them. So he goes out of his house and he takes that gold, he bumps into someone, throws it at him and runs. And everyone the next morning, they, they found this humorous incident spreading through the township where they said, yesterday, a person gave charity to a thief. So that man, that Jewish individual, that individual who was upon faith, he said, how could I have given charity to a thief? That charity couldn't be accepted. No, I'm going to go out again tomorrow, tomorrow night, I'm going to give charity in the same way so no one knows who I am. He goes out the next day, Azzakumullah, may Allah honor us all, and he gives charity to an individual, to a woman of the night, to a streetwalker, and runs. She doesn't know who he is, he doesn't know who she is. The next morning, everyone's laughing. Someone gave charity to a lady of the night. So I said, How could my charity be accepted? The next night, he goes out, he gives charity. And everyone wakes up and they say, 
a man gave charity to the wealthiest of our city. And then the Prophet was amused as you and I are amused. The Sahaba laughed like you laughed and I laugh. And then he said to them, لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا Don't look down at any good deed you do. أما السارق فاكتفى The thief, when he was given that money, he said, that's enough for me. He went home, didn't rob anyone. وأما العاهر اكتفت The lady, she took the money, went home, didn't tempt anyone, didn't soil herself, didn't put herself in a degrading situation between herself and her maker and society. She was, she had enough. And the rich person went out the fourth night to give charity. That fourth night, that wealthy person, the richest of people, was the one who learned that lesson of giving to others. That progression is important for us as Muslims today. That is what leads us towards Allah. Determination. You gave charity, it goes to someone, it goes to something, it goes to a different place, give to others, give to others, keep going. Don't look down at any righteous deed you do. Keep your faith in Allah and know that Allah knows you, sees you, hears you, desires for you to come to Him. And if you desire Him and follow His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and fulfill your Iman, are strong in faith, are strong in faith, are strong in faith and fulfilling of your taqwa, you will be from those who are successful. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most high to make our gathering in these next two days a gathering of mercy and a gathering of tranquility. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most high to change our hearts for the better. I ask Allah to forgive us our sins and to hide them from those who see us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us better than people think and estimate us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to lead us towards the Quran, to make it a cornerstone of our life and our families. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with his love and the love of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafoor al-rahim. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته